Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon was one of several state chief executives who spoke at the convention. Governor Fallon drew contrasts with President Barack Obama as she endorsed former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney for president. There. Thank you. President Reagan once said, there are no great limits to growth because there are no limits of human intelligence, imagination, and wonder. He believed, like I believe, like Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan believe, that the potential for America is limitless. We can and we will overcome any economic challenge if, and listen to this, if the federal government gets out of the way and if it lets go of the regulatory chokehold that's zapping the air out of our economy and it's deflating the spirits of our entrepreneurs. We need a president who will applaud and encourage those who work hard to pursue their dreams, to reach their potential, and in doing so, make themselves and America better and stronger. And that man is Mitt Romney. The history of the state of Oklahoma offers a great example of pursuing the American dream. It was built and settled by pioneers moving west to seek better lives. During the great land run of 1889, thousands of families rushed up and put a stake down on empty plots of land. They built tent cities overnight. They farmed the land. They worked very hard. And in 1897, eight years after the land run, a handful of very adventuresome pioneers risked their own money. And listen, it wasn't the federal government's money, no. They risked their own money to drill Oklahoma's first oil well, the Nellie Johnstone. And by doing so, these early day pioneers changed the future and the fortune of Oklahoma forever. And today, Oklahoma is one of the nation's key energy producers and job creators with an unemployment rate of 4.9 percent. Now, President Obama, he wants us to believe that Oklahomans owe that success to the federal government, to the Department of Energy or the EPA or the IRS or maybe even him. Well, Mr. President, we know better. And as an Oklahoma, we say that dog won't hunt. We owe these remarkable successes to the imagination and the ingenuity of people like my friend, Oklahoman Harold Hamm. He is the son of sharecroppers and the youngest of 13 children. Harold grew up in a small town of Lexington, Oklahoma. And as a child, he helped out on the farm and he went to school only after the first freeze or Christmas, whichever came first, and while attending high school. He worked for a dollar an hour at a gas station. After school, Harold took a job cleaning out oil barrels. And guess what? At the age of 20, he bought his own truck and he began a one-man oil field service business. He made enough money to begin taking college-level courses in geology and mineralogy. And at the age of 26, he drilled a wildcat well that produced 75 barrels of oil an hour and in Oklahoma, we call that a gusher. Today, Harold Hamm is the chairman and the CEO of Oklahoma's own Continental Resources, a top 10 U.S. producer of petroleum liquids, and he's got nearly 700 employees operating in 10 states and valued at over $13 billion. Now, Harold and his company are helping to power cars and homes and businesses all across the nation. Harold and other energy entrepreneurs have completely transformed the U.S. energy's outlook. And with that, President Romney will end America's dependence on foreign oil. And most importantly, we're going to create even more American jobs. Carol's success story is not a one of a kind, it's the American dream and that has been realized by countless men and women since the very founding of this country. 
He is just one of the many visionaries and innovators in the private sector that are the true drivers of economic growth and creation. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what President Obama just doesn't get. He'll tell you, if you got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. Well, Mr. President, like who? You think it's the IRS, the EPA, or the federal government? Gosh. The president believes the government is responsible for our successes, and that's why his solution to everything is more government, bigger spending, more regulation, more bureaucratic programs like Obamacare. And he says his plans are working, but look at the results. 42 months of unemployment, over 8 percent, 23 million Americans out of work, underemployed, or even just not even looking for work anymore, a nation that is threatened by nearly $16 trillion of debt, and families that are feeling pinched not just by a bad economy, but by a president that promised hope and change and left many Americans with no hope and just change in their pockets. <laughs> President Obama believes that the power of big government is a key to American success. But let me tell you, Mitt Romney believes in the power of the people. <laughs> Mitt Romney understands that it's free enterprise and hard work, not the government that has made the United States the envy of the world. And by the way, the selection of Wisconsin Paul Ryan to be his running mate is an excellent choice. There are many reasons that he'll make a great vice president. Not the least to mention is that his wife is from Medill, Oklahoma. And of course, he has two dogs that are named Boomer and Sooner after the Oklahomans in the land run. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Romney-Ryan team will reverse the tide of decline and promote economic security. They know that it's hard-working American families, not the federal bureaucracy, that has built our great and glorious nation. Mitt Romney is ready to lead. He has the experience. He has the vision and we will restore America's economy and its greatness. I am proud to support his candidacy for president, and as the next leader of the free world, Mitt Romney will make us all very proud. God bless you, and thank you.